talking to many different members of our Migraine Australia community, some of whom are just ordinary people and some of them are absolutely not. We have Simone Dow from the band Voyager with us today. Hi, how are you doing? Hello. Oh, that was a lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Making me feel more important. Loving Thank the you. shirt, by the way. <laughs> oh, yep. Got to get it in there, you know. Yeah. It's all, all about that this month. 2021 vintage. I love that year. It was um probably yeah. my favourite year in terms of T-shirts. I'm going to bring some of those back, I think. Um, so You had a really cool metal shirt, actually. I have yeah. the metal shirt as well that you had with the, yeah, I wear that one a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a good shirt. <laughs> we do like our shirt. You know, like we got to have some fun with migraine, right? All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so what's been happening with Voyager? You went to Eurovision last year. We did. So um, I think the last time you spoke to me, we we did Australia Decides in 22 mm -hmm. and we came second mm -hmm. and uh, the public were not happy that we came second because they <laughs> voted us to win, which was obviously felt really nice to, to be wanted. Um, and we thought that was the end of our Eurovision journey after that. We were like, okay, well, that was nice and it was great and picked up a few more fans. Um, you know, we'll just get on with what we normally do and write albums. But, um, no, SBS and um, Blink TV were like, oh, you know, we'd really love it if you'd consider putting in a song again. And our manager was like, okay, I think you should do it. And this was like... October 22 and we're like oh my god we have a, we have like one month to write a song so we um promptly got back home from our tour in Europe and started working on a song didn't really think we were going to get anywhere with it but we're like we enjoyed it still because it is um it's hard to write a three minute song it is very hard to get everything into three minutes that you want <laughs> to say especially when you're in a metal band so we're usually five minute plus songs so it's a bit of a mission um and then yeah just before Christmas they got on the blower at ever the teasers that they are at Blink TV and SBS doing the uh oh have you thought about staging and have you thought about <laughs> this and teasing us oh yeah we've thought about it and they go, oh, well, we're really glad you thought about it because you are going to Liverpool to represent Australia in Eurovision 2023 <laughs> and we, and you can't tell anyone. So <laughs> we were under NDAs and we couldn't tell anyone and it was like, oh, my God. We, we Obviously, immediate family got to know and um, we had to keep that in film video clips and, you know, get in touch with Tourism WA and government and get all that stuff done in the quiet of the night while no one was noticing um preparing for for yeah the announcement in March and um so you had yeah, to wait it, for how, it, how many months did you have to keep that a secret yeah it was like two two and a half three months so it, I don't think it got announced till end of February early March <laughs> wow. of 2023 so yeah the only person that knew was my mum um, because I live with her, so yeah. <laughs> kind of couldn't hide it. She's like, why are you going out and doing all these things? <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was an absolute whirlwind after that. I mean, it was, um, I, I like to say it was the best and worst thing at the same time when mm. you're living with migraine disease. It was great. Like, I would I have no regrets. I would, like, in a heartbeat do it again, but... Yeah, it was full on. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Well, it that's was... the next thing I was going to ask you. I mean, because if you want to pick a, a, you know, an environment that is all lights, all noise, I don't think you get any louder or brighter than Eurovision. Yeah. <laughs> well, they like it light and loud and uh, bright there. So, um, well, they do. And, yeah. you know, I thought this was a great interview. Um, You know, like I just happened to be in the studio today and I thought rather than having burples behind me, I would actually have this station behind me because, um, uh, you know, as somebody else that works in media with music and, and constant noise, how do you manage it? It's hard, but I, I was actually just doing a video today about this as well because mm. we're talking about myths and things around um, around migraine and the, the amount of people that come up to you that have this misconception that music and creativity causes migraine is mm. actually like one of the most disheartening things to get asked it hurts a little bit it kind of annoys me if I'm kind of honest as well because it's like so ignorant mm. <laughs> you know it's like nothing that you're doing is causing 
migraine. It's something that you live with. It's a genetic disorder. Um, yeah. Really, all you can do is try and work within the confines of that. So, um, but I think a lot of us try and avoid too much sensory things as well, because I think you can almost uh, make yourself more sensitive the more that mm. you try and avoid things and become avoidant to it. So I think it's kind of trying to find a happy balance. So for me, I've now got things like the Avulux glasses, which you can probably see on my face. They've become like such an integral part of my toolkit now that I don't even know how I survived without them. It was literally <laughs> just sunglasses up until then. But now I can actually like stare at screens and things like this and mm. I don't want to rip my eyeballs out. No, they are not going to stop strobing because I don't think anything can stop strobing, but it certainly helps with dialing down a lot of that that light pain. Um, I also wear earplugs. So I've, I've got loop earplugs that I wear sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when we're on tour or we're doing shows, we um, use these things called, you've probably heard of in-ear monitoring system. Mm -hmm. So I don't get slammed as much these days with the the loud noises. I can avoid things. And obviously trying to take myself out of the room as much as possible. So not standing in the room and watching the bands too much when mm. when it's all around and taking breaks from it and going into a quiet room and just um, giving myself a break is, yeah. is sort of the main thing. And I have to do that when I'm doing touring anyway. Um, so, yeah, I just had to do it majorly while I was doing Eurovision. Um, <laughs> thankfully, the team were awesome. They, um, you know, made plans throughout the day for me to be able to actually have some nap breaks in between, mm -hmm. which was really nice of them. So it's, it's really great when you've got a good community behind you that actually gets it. You know, and you, and feel you can have a con yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't, they didn't just be like, oh, you know, here we go. Yeah. You know, they, they actually were like, a few of the people actually had migraine as well. So they were mm. like quite understanding and, and empathetic. So they were like, no, we, you know, we don't want you guys burning out. And we know, I mean, they do this every year. So they know how full on it is. So they were enforcing on all five of us, like, <laughs> you have to take breaks. You can't go ham all the time. You have to sleep. You can't talk to people all the time. And um, I, I guess I had a lot of practice in that area um, living with migraines. Mm. So I was kind of kicking the other guy's butts. Go <laughs> take a break. <laughs> Have a break. That discipline Danny, is so hard. Got to sing. <laughs> and I think the combination, I mean, I find the same thing here at the radio station, right? I've got a really supportive team. Everybody around me is really great. And they understand there's a couple of other guys on the team that either have migraine themselves or their partners have migraine and they get it. Um, they have seen me carted out of this building in a hospital, like in an ambulance. So, uh, you know, they, they do understand it's serious and real. But I actually find even though there's constant noise here in the studio, it's actually that consistency that works for me. Like it's actually better than loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, or, you know, the big exactly. bangs in the night will bother me a great deal more than having constant music. So, um, you know, it's about understanding how your brain works and what your brain deals with. And certainly, you know, the creative industries are full of people with migraine, but most of them hide it. Um, yes. So it's great and I am very appreciative that you um, are willing to come out and talk publicly um, and so wonderfully about your migraine. So tell me, what do you get from the Migraine Australia community who probably can't relate to your life but certainly <laughs> can relate to your migraine? Honestly, um, for me, Migraine Australia was like one of the first communities that I kind of stumbled upon. Um, and it would have been around 2019, I think it was. I was in a really bad place. Um, probably about five or six years ago, I was in my funk where I was just kind of going around in a big circle and not really going anywhere, still trying to do my music, um, not able to work full time um, and just kind of a bit down in the down in the. Uh, dumps really about what I was doing with myself and I came across the Migraine Australia chat group on Facebook and honestly it I think I said this to you before it saved my life on quite honestly because actually just 
reading other people who are going through a similar story, a similar journey to me, reading about symptoms that I thought, am I going crazy? And realizing, oh, actually, this is part of migraine disease. I'm not going crazy. It is normal to have fibromyalgia, joint and nerve pains constantly. That's not a weird thing. Okay, cool. You know, oh, these weird, like, light things that I'm saying, that's normal, or like having hot and cold sensitivity is normal. Oh, okay, cool. And just reading other people talking about things that worked for them as well, you know, it sheds light on things so that you can go out and try them. I mean, it's not necessarily going to work for you as well, mm. but the fact that you've got a group of people who are passionate and living with it as well, and we all just want to help each other, you know, we all just want to help each other find that thing that just makes living with migraine disease a little bit more accommodating and easier um, to, to kind of get through life. Um, so honestly, it was it was a game changer for me finding the page and then, you know, meeting you guys along the way as well and doing a few interviews here and there. I think what you do for the community is is priceless. I mean, the work that you guys did as well with um, the CGIP medications and getting getting the government behind you. I mean, it was all over the news. I remember when that was happening and I was so, so stoked and so proud to see that. <laughs> like, yeah, I you remember guys are being very tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. This is the thing. People don't realise we're, we're like living with this disease and we're trying to fight and do these mm. things at the same time. We're hardworking people and we de generally will push ourselves to a point where we probably shouldn't, but it's because we're just so passionate. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we have to gear up for another one of those fights, similar intensity to 2020, 21, to get Nurtech, which is, of course, the next big breakthrough. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm having my Wheaties and I'm very glad that I have a supportive employer and I have great people that work in my business and, um, you know, this amazing team of volunteers at Migraine Australia who are all willing to get in the fight. We always need more. Go to the website, migraine.org.au slash volunteer and sign up now. Um, yep, I would be it. remiss if I didn't throw that in. <laughs> there you go. Get it in there. <laughs> That's what um, it's all about. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, it, that it changed your life is great and it's fantastic. And I sincerely hope that we see more of you and Voyager doing great things uh, and that we continue to see you around as part of our community being stronger together. I hope so too be a part of it as long as I can be and whatever I can do to help. Um, and, yeah, if anyone ever just wants to ask any questions, my DMs are always open. Um, I think it's really important that we do talk to one another because that's how we generally find out about things most of the time. It's generally not going to the doctors. It's talking to each other. Talking to each other. Absolutely right. All right, Simone, thank you so much for being with me and happy Migraine Awareness Month. Happy Migraine Awareness Month to you and the team.